Dave, this, this must feel really cool, coming to the club that you first arrived at as a 10-year-old with your granddad and your uncle, only this time you haven't got your name up, but you own it. Yeah, it's pretty mad how uh, 30 years later we're back here. I started here with my granddad uh, when I was 10, and now here we are at 41, uh, back in my own little club. Yeah, it's great. Did you think about putting putting your name in the title somewhere? No, absolutely not. I, I couldn't possibly cope with that. Too cringy, no chance. <laughs> if, I, if I had like a CV like a Ronnie or something, maybe, but uh, not with my CV. And have you, have you always had it in the back of your mind or was it just a sequence of handy coincidences that, that led to the decision? Yeah, it was just pure uh, fluke, really. We come here just before lo real lockdown in 2020 March. My mates play in the Burton League, play from this place. It was called South Derbyshire. And uh, coming here, it was exactly as it was 30 years ago when uh, we knew the place was up for sale, but obviously we went into lockdown. So that killed it for a little bit. And uh, sadly, the former owner, Alan and Linda, Alan passed away at Christmas time. It was really sad. They had the place 35 years and Linda contacted us and asked us if we was interested in buying and uh, Phil, Phil and Nezza, my business partners, they're like really keen, obviously it's pure sentiment to me, but uh, really glad we did it, you know, um, we really like what we're doing with the place. How far back does the friendship go between the three of you? Were you at school together? No, uh, we actually met through snooker, the snooker club in Tamworth where I played for many years, the sports bar, sadly I've met, left there now, so that's quite, quite mad after 30 years. Um, but we met when we was around 12 years of age at a junior snooker academy. And uh, yeah, we've been great mates since we all trust each other. It, it, it works really well. And what elements have you done from a physical point of view? Are you, are you good with electrics? Have you, are you quite good with painting and decorating? What, what have you actually done? Yeah, I'm pure um, painter and decorator I am. Uh, yeah, we had many a late night in here, through the night, all sorts. Uh, Neil's the sparky, great Andy man, so he does that side of thing. And, Phil looks after the finances and, and staffing, so uh, it all works quite really well. You know, they say free crowd, freezer crowd, but it works really well. Well, and, and that trust is is of paramount importance, and it obviously is. You go so far back, that's that's not up for question. Yeah. Geographically, what's what's close round here? Could could people from the centre of the town walk here and, and and have a have a couple of frames and have a couple of pints and not worry about the car? Where are we? Yeah, absolutely. We're pretty much banging this. Uh, Centre of the Swaddling Coat Town Centre. We've got the police station there. So anyone at Swad or Burton area that wants to pop in, we've got free car park there and, and, and here. There's lots of uh, houses on the on the outskirts. Just walk down and give us a look. Come and have a beer. And do you know many of the people who come in or, or not? Like, do you go there's, back with them as yeah, well? Yeah, there's a lot of old faces. It was, all right, Dave, how are you doing? I ain't seen you. You know, I mean, you when you was 10, 11 years old with your granddad and that. Uh, obviously, at the start, I, I recognise faces, but I'm not very good with names, so I had to keep saying to people, you know, I'm not rude or ignorant, I just can't remember your name. But we're getting there. Um, like I say, we've got a hell of a lot more members now than when we opened, so it's all going really well. Well, yeah, I mean, don't, don't be shy about that. The, the numbers are absolutely amazing. <clears throat> just just clarify how many you had when you took over and where you are now, because I, I thought that was an extraordinary yeah, progress. Yeah, well, I think when we took over, we had around 170, 180, and uh, I think we just hit uh, 800th member, so maybe if we... We might have to do an offer for a thousandth member and uh, put a prize up for, for offer, but obviously the weather's killing us for a bit, so we might not hit it just yet. But it shows you, that's, that's a massive turnaround, so it shows you that there is still a big appetite for snooker in this area. Yeah, I think um, there's a huge appetite for it, especially uh, the, the snooker's still popular in the Burton, South Derbyshire area. There's a lot of teams still going. That we, you know, I think we've got five or six teams still. Uh, and the other thing is pool. Pool's huge here, so we've stuck some pool tables in, and I think we'll stick a couple more in yet, you know. Um, so we're trying to cater for serious snooker. We try to make the snooker room as nice as possible, but, we, you know, we want downstairs a bit more of a fun, sporty feel, get the music on and have a beer and enjoy yourself kind of feel to it too. Oh, it, it wouldn't be a club involved with you if there wasn't some, uh, some decent music, especially on the old dance music front from the 90s. Um, let's, let's get inside and, uh, and take a look. So this, this is the top floor and I love the fact that this is the first thing you see. Do you know what? That's one of my outstanding crucible memories when he did that walk around with that trophy because he's just so... There's such a humility and grace with Steve, which you can tell in his face there. That's a great picture. Yeah, absolute legend. Uh, I was actually there that session, waiting backstage to come on playing Ronnie, I think. So, uh, 
Yeah, I was well. I remember watching you on the camera thinking, come on, Rob, get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that was 2016. That's insane. It flies, doesn't it? Where it are these years going? It flies. Right, so this is, this is your floor, table down the far end. Troy, what, what was he really like? He's, he's been talking a great deal about you, saying what a, what a great influence you were. Was he... Could you spot the potential when he was a kid? He's always been a lovely lad. Uh, yeah, he was, he, was, he was a good player right from the off. Um, learned really quickly. Um, you told him something and he was like, yeah, got it straight away. Yeah, by the time he was 15, he was way past anything that, that we could teach him. Oh, superb. And you must have been over the moon when he won the Championship League. Uh, all, watching him all the time, it's amazing. You know, to see someone that you've seen as a lad playing uh, in those sort of arenas, it's incredible. And the snooker he plays is phenomenal. Oh, he is. And so, right, so he never has to buy a pint in here again, okay? <laughs> Good. <laughs> he only drinks water anyway. Oh, so superb. Right. <laughs> so this, so this, is, this is your practice table. So this is, yep. this is where the hard yards will be done yep. for the forthcoming season and beyond. Yeah, yeah, I bought this table off a local guy uh, trying to source a star table at the meeting. It's a nightmare. Local guy was selling one, so we banged it straight in. And uh, I've got my other table in now, so we've got two star tables in here, but I'll, I'll only play on this one. It's out of the way, it's in the corner, it's where I first ever played. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to putting the graph back in. And you'll, presumably you'll, you'll, you'll get the likes of Ben Wollaston and Mark will come over and you'll do a few hours with those boys as well. Yeah, like I, I play with uh, Woolly a lot. Um, used to play with Selby all the time, the COVID thing again, but hopefully we can start practicing. Like I played with him a couple of times for the World Championships and I said, mate, can we start like practice together a lot together? Because like, you see, I know why I improved so much, you know. Uh, Mark helped me tremendously a few years ago, just practicing with him, see how he operates, you know, such a brilliant player. Uh, so yeah, hopefully some, uh, some of the good guys will come and give us a knock. And, and how much inspiration and how much satisfaction do you take from having that on the wall. Bru that was a brutal haircut, by the way. Yeah, good one, mate. Yeah, when, you get, when it gets hot, the, the hair has to come off, so it might have to come off again soon. Uh, now I don't really look at that one, to be honest. The only, the only one that really means anything to me are the ones on the far end. Um, obviously, the one in the middle is a German Masters final. Anybody that's lucky enough to play one table set up in Germany, it's an amazing atmosphere. Uh, the one playing at the Masters, I think the Masters is my favourite ever comp. I was lucky enough to play at the Ali Pali before the lockdown. That was an incredible experience. And obviously that's my best ever win. I think I just beat Mark Williams, who was defending champion at the time in the uh, World Championships 2019. And that, that win meant a lot because I'd lost a huge final to him. Uh, and, and it's all anybody ever went on about, oh, you've lost a 9-5, oh, he's got no bottle, blah, 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 all that malarkey. So that win meant a lot for me back then. That, that was interesting because I had assumed, I, I knew it was the crucible just by the, the, the layout and where your eyes are looking up to, yeah. but I had assumed that was you winning through to your first single table setup. So the win right. over Kyron in the quarters, I didn't realise it was the win against Willow the round before. Yeah, I'm never one for giving it large or anything like that, but uh, you know, Mark's such a special player, being defending champion and, and, and all the stick I took for losing that final, it was, uh, it was a, nice, a nice win for me. And I know you, you mentioned the Masters, and you've been you, two, two semis at the Masters? Two semis. Yeah. yeah. It, that competition, it, it just blows me away. Because I, I, when I came into the sport in 08, you know, on, on, a, on a regular basis, obviously it was all about the Crucible, but I've kind of, I've learned over the, the number of years I've covered the Masters, the, the real history and the prestige, and the noise that they've started to generate at Ali Pali yeah. in the last two years, well, yeah, pre-COVID yeah. and then the most recent one, it's, it's mental, isn't it? It must be Incredible. an electric place to play. Yeah, obviously, I never thought I'd play a Masters, so when I finally got in one, uh, I, I, knew, I knew I'd never been a watched or anything. Everyone said how big and all that is and the razzmatazz, because it is like, it's like a premier event, you know? I know the Crucible's the one, but the Masters, the, the hospitality and everything, they, they really do look after you. It's like an, another level, really. The world should be up, really. Um, but I remember playing, I lost to Stuart, obviously, in the semi, but I remember we went to break off after the interval and, and the crowd just didn't stop. They just kept going and going and give it one of them. Like, yeah, absolutely mental. And I really hope that I'm lucky enough to get back to the Ali Pali and play with a crowd again, because the one we played in lockdown just wasn't the same. It was. It was so bizarre. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they did a great job for us at Milton yeah, Keynes, yeah. but it was so, 
strange and yeah. such a contrast to Ali Pali. Yeah. And, and when you play in the Masters, because uh, it's obviously exciting to be there from an MC's point of view, but from a player's point of view, is it the kind of atmosphere and backdrop that makes you feel like a, sport, a proper sports star? I just think it's all on you, isn't it? It's the way, any, any time it's at one table, you know you're involved in something, you know, and uh, like when you stand behind waiting for you guys, to, you, you like doing your bit on the mic and you could walk up the stair, right guys, it's time, you're like, you know, you can't help it, you, everything's going, you know what I mean? Everything is to jelly. You do your bit, and music hits, and you know you're walking into something special. You know, if you if you can't uh, if you don't enjoy that, then maybe maybe it's only because I played a couple, but they all must enjoy that. You know, no matter how many times they play it. And I, I think we've got a similar um, a similar uh, taste in music because I loved I loved always loved dance music, right. especially from the nineties. Yeah, yeah. Is is Insomnia? Is that Faithless tune? Yeah. Like your all-time favourite well, track? Is that one comes on the radio yeah, and yeah, you're well, really going for it in the car? You can't help but bounce about to it, can you? I think my all-time classic would be uh, Paul Van Dyke for an Angel, but a remix, the Matt Dairy remix. I found a lover. So if anyone likes the tune, bang that one on YouTube and have a listen to that one. That is a that is a fantastic tune That's for an amazing. Angel. What yeah. about the likes of? Uh, OT Quartet, Hold That Sucker Down, Gat to Core, Passion. Oh, you lost me there. No, no, I'll probably know. I'm not very good at remembering what the, the, the top songs are called. You've completely lost me there, but I might know it. I don't know. <laughs> and when you, uh, when you go on the odd occasion, when you go to a club, because you get two types of people who, who like our kind of music, you get those like me who will be on the dance, like I could yeah, dance yeah. in front I can of anyone. I can imagine you go mental, sober mate. As a judge. <laughs> are, you, are you more of a listener or a dancer? Uh, I'm a listener until I've had a few too many, and then I'm uh, I'm away with the fairies. Then yeah, I'll go for it then. Well, probably not on your level, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just that when you get those kind of tunes, it just oh, it just absolutely fires yeah, you up, yeah. doesn't it? It's so cool. I'm getting old though now because I like a bit of the '80s for some reason. I'm getting a bit into that. I don't know what's happening to me. I'll I'll, I'll leave you to the '80s, yeah. but I'm definitely with you on the '90s dance cool. music. Let's hope there are plenty of occasions at the business end where we're giving it the Good big one, faithless yeah. insomnia for the Tamworth Massive. I hope so, mate, yeah. Thank, thanks for having Cheers, us around. Rob. It's been absolutely thanks, brilliant. Mate. Cheers. Thanks, Rob.